So there seems to be this misunderstanding out there that reverse dieting means increasing your calories at an incredibly slow pace. Honestly, I haven't helped this misconception because when I talk about reverse dieting, I usually do refer to it as slowly increasing your calories. But the truth is, it doesn't have to be slow, it just basically means systematically increasing your calories over time. The pace is ultimately up to you, you just have to understand the positives and negatives of a faster or slower pace and determine what matters most to you. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm not only going to talk about what these drawbacks and positives are, but also exactly how fast to increase your calories depending on what your goals are. So first, let me make one thing very clear. You don't actually have to reverse diet after cutting. Theoretically, you could just bump your calories right back up to maintenance immediately, but what a lot of people don't understand is your maintenance calories is a moving target. So say for instance, your maintenance calories before cutting were 2000, you dropped your calories, you went through a fat loss phase, you lost around 15 to 20 pounds, and now you're at 1300 calories. Well, now your maintenance calories is no longer 2000, and if you do jump back up to that number, you're gonna gain weight quickly. There's two main reasons for this, the first being your hormones and metabolism have suppressed from the dieting that you've done and now it needs time to recover, and two, now you're literally carrying around less mass. You weigh less, so therefore your body expends less energy just being you. So the reason we reverse diet after cutting is to get your calories back up, allow your hormones metabolism to catch back up while minimizing the chances of additional fat gain during the process. Now occasionally people will say they can't reverse diet because when they start increasing calories it triggers them to overeat and they just go nuts and can't take it, which hey that's fine, you don't have to reverse diet, but if you don't that basically leaves you with two options. Either you just keep eating those low calories you were dieting on to maintain your weight, and honestly, that's probably not a very fun life to live, or you jump your calories right back up quickly, but then your metabolism can't handle this and you're much more likely to gain additional weight. Which is why for most people, reverse dieting is a better option, you just have to decide what pace is right for you. Now a common fear, of course, is to undo all the hard work you've done and gain the weight back, and I completely get this. But if you stay diligent to the process and take your time and don't rush it, this is how you can get your calories back up without undoing all your hard work. This doesn't mean you shouldn't expect to gain some weight back, but we can minimize it this way and it helps you live a much more balanced life and not be controlled by the scale and low calories. And the big distinction you need to make here is knowing the difference between gaining a little bit of weight back to get your calories up versus gaining all the weight back. Regardless, when you reverse diet, you can go faster or you can go slower. The pace you take to increase calories depends on what's most important to you. The slower you increase calories, the less likely you are to gain weight during the process, but the longer it's gonna take to start feeling better, get your calories up so you can enjoy more food, start recovering better, and all the positive things that come with getting more calories. While the faster you increase the calories, the faster you're gonna feel better and all those things, but the more likely you are to gain more weight during the process. There isn't a right or wrong answer here. Like I said, it depends what's most important to you. Now don't go anywhere because I am going to give you numbers you can follow based on what your goals are at the end of this video, but first, here's a few things you need to keep in mind as you go through this process. One is, especially if you're reverse dieting, not at the end of a cut, but to try to get your metabolism back in a better place after a long time of yo-yo dieting, do not make the mistake of trying to rush the reverse diet so you can get it over with quicker and start your diet. Remember, if you just get your calories up and then immediately slash them, your body won't have time to have adjusted to this and your body will not respond. Reverse dieting isn't just about getting your calories up, you need to get them up and then hold them to allow your body to adapt. If you try to rush this, you're just gonna gain more weight that you will have to take off down the road, but you're still gonna have to wait before you can cut again. So while there can be some benefits to going quicker, getting the process over with faster isn't really one of them. Another thing to consider is how well you're adhering to the plan. For instance, you may think that your priority is to try to minimize weight gain as much as possible, so what you do is you keep your calories low, you make your increases slowly, but what can happen is, because your calories are so low, you have a hard time adhering to the plan and you keep overeating. If that's the case, then a faster pace of increasing calories might actually not only be better, but allow for less weight gain. Let me give you an example. Let's just say, for instance, you're reverse dieting and you set your target at 1,500 calories. You may hit 1,500 calories a few days of the week, but then other days you're hitting 1,800, 2,000, 2,500 or more calories. Because of this, your actual calories consumed on average per day for the week is probably more like 1,800. But if instead of 1,500 calories, maybe you said 1,650 calories, and because of this, you felt more satisfied and you actually consume 1,650 calories per day on average, then even though your target calories are more, your actual consumed calories is less. 
And I can't tell you how many people get caught up in their target calories, completely ignoring what they're actually eating, and that's what really matters. And on a similar note, and I'm not trying to be mean here, I'm just trying to give you things to think about, I hear a lot of people complaining about reverse dieting, saying it's the reverse diet that made them gain weight, but they're constantly overeating. If you're not adhering to the plan, you can't really blame the reverse. But again, what's the alternative? Just stay low calorie forever? Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about how to increase calories depending on what's most important to you. The first thing to understand though is the first week you increase calories after a cut is different than all the other weeks. And this especially is true if you're still losing weight once you stop your cut. Because if you're still losing weight, then you're in a calorie deficit, which means your maintenance calories is higher than that. So in this case, if you want to make a bigger increase right off the bat, it'll be safer to do that. As far as how much to bump up your calories that first week, if we take the equation of 3,500 calories as one pound of fat, of course it's not quite that simple, but it is a good estimate. That means a 500 calorie deficit every single day would be that pound. So say for instance, you're losing around a half a pound a week, then you would know that an increase of about 250 calories per day would be a safe increase to maintenance. However, that being said, there can still be some benefit of taking a slower increase even if you are still in a deficit. Because if you do take the slower pace and you increase calories, you're still getting a bump in calories to get a little bit of relief, but it's still gonna be a deficit for you, so you'll still lose a little bit of weight going through the process. And by losing early in the reverse, this will help create a little bit more wiggle room, so to speak, for when you do eventually start putting on a little weight down the road. Now, if you have plateaued by the end of your cut when you start the reverse, now a smaller increase would make more sense. But even then, I usually typically start with at least 100 calories. Not always, but the thing is, even though you're technically at maintenance since you aren't losing weight, I just find when you start the reverse, usually when you kick things up by 100 calories or so, this kind of gets things going inside the body and it kind of speeds up the hormones and metabolism, things that are suppressed in your body, and it's usually still a pretty safe increase. Now, after that first week, now we're gonna do things in a similar fashion each week moving Moving forward depending on what's happening with your weight. So by the end of your week, if you're maintaining your weight, then I would increase your calories by around 30 to 60 calories on average for the week. If you find that you're gaining weight, then you may wanna hold steady and give your body some time to adjust to these new calories, or if you wanna keep the process going, you can go up to about 40 calories. And if you're actually losing weight during the reverse, then you can be more aggressive and do maybe 50 to 100 or more calories. But again, you aren't limited to this. You can do as much as you want. You can go up by 250 if you want. You just have to understand the trade-off. In fact, all these ranges I give you are merely suggestions, you can be more or less aggressive if you want, it's totally up to you. Please note though, because there is typically confusion with this, when I say increase your calories by 50 per day, I mean that's what you do each day for the week, not increasing 50 calories every day, but say for instance you're eating 1500 calories, if you increase your calories by 50, you would eat 1550 calories every single day for the week, or at least make sure your average is 1550 if you do high and low day calories. It's always that average for the week that matters the most. As far as which side of the range to fall on, if you wanna maintain your weight as much as possible, stick to the lower side of things. If you just wanna feel better faster and get some of those positive benefits that come from a reverse and don't care quite as much about weight gain, then stick to the higher side. Now with that all being said, you do have to be careful because there's a lot of common mistakes a lot of people make with reverse dieting that makes the process go poorly. To find out what those mistakes are so you don't make them yourself, then make sure you check out this top video on the screen or I have a link in the description as well. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you at that other video.